In this video, I'm going to show you how to fold an old English sheepdog designed by Stephen Casey. I'm going to use a square with a side length of 24 centimeters or 9.5 inches, and the folded dog then stands 7.25 centimeters or 2 and 7 eighths of an inch tall, is 8 centimeters or 3 and 1 eighths of an inch long, and about 4.5 centimeters or one and three quarters of an inch deep. So let's get started. For a predominantly white model, we're going to start with the white side up and crease corner to opposite corner to add a diagonal crease line. Then unfold and bring this raw edge to the crease line you just created. Rotate to now add a crease that goes through this extra layer of paper. So I'm going to adjust the crease line so it starts here and then align this point with the central crease line to get a straight crease. And unfold. Now we're going to bring this corner to the opposite corner to add the other diagonal. And then rotate so now this crease line right here is oriented this way. Now bring this corner to the central crease intersection and add another crease. Now line this crease line up with that crease line and crease throughout. Now take this corner and bring it to that corner folding in a tip to form the nose. And unfold. Now flip over and now we're going to fold in these edges and notice that the corner of the nose is in the bottom here. Next we're going to take these corners and fold them in to this point and ensure that the paper does not drift here, but stays flat, just like this. Now we're going to fold this section so that we're connecting these two points right here. And then we're going to flip the paper over and fold in the other direction. Now rotate and also fold up, connecting these two points right here. Next we're going to take this edge and align it with that edge right there and only crease up to the central parting here. You will be able to see a crease line here. Unfold and repeat on the other side. Now keep this side folded and push the other crease into place again and then push this together so that you get this shape and fold it over to one side. You will add a new crease right here. Now we're going to fold this behind so that the fold we're adding ends exactly in this corner right there. So I'm just going to pinch it and then turn the model over so that I can see what I'm doing and add a strong crease. I also want to fold this section up right here, just where that corner lies, so that you can see you will have a corner here too. You're folding up to that and then align edge with edge to get a nice straight crease like this. Now we want to fold this in half and we're going to let that extra layer pop out. And if you have a small corner folded here, just unfold it. And now bring that tip down to that edge to add another crease. And now you have this crease line right here, 
we're going to align it with that edge to fold down this triangle halfway. Now we want to add some diagonal creases here and here. So we're going to align this edge with that edge and we're going to work with the top layer only. And we only need to crease up to this point right here. And same thing on the other side. Now we want to take this edge and fold it down so that it meets that intersection of the two creases we just added. Like that. And then push to add a crease right here. So this is what it looks like right now. Now we're going to flip it over and we're going to start shaping the legs. I'm going to rotate this and zoom in a little. We're now going to take this point and bring it over to that point where you see this extra layer starts. And this is just for orientation. And we're going to try and start a horizontal crease that goes about that far. But you can see there's paper tension here. So if you've got that started, what we're going to do is we're actually going to open this area up by going in there with a finger. And then we're going to press on this crease so that it lines up with the crease we're starting to form to make a squash fold. And we're going to try and get this crease to be straight so that it's basically parallel to this edge and that edge. So this is what it looks like now. And then we're going to extend the crease, again pushing this open, so that we can then flatten this down in the same way. So this is the result. Then rotate and repeat on this side. Again, first get the distance by bringing this corner to that point, pressing it in place, opening up the paper, and then squashing it down symmetrically to then extend the crease to the other side. Again, opening up the paper here so that you can really see a point forming and then flattening the paper down symmetrically and adding a crease. If this isn't quite straight, don't worry too much. You can correct it a little if you want to, which I'm going to do now, or just leave it. Of course, animals aren't 100% symmetrical either. But for good measure, this is a bit straighter now. So if you ever see something that you don't quite like, just fix it right away. Now we're going to flip over the model and fold it in half like this. And now you can already see a tail section. And this is where we're going to form the head. And we're going to concentrate on that next. First, notice that you have these different layers here we're going to inside reverse fold this corner as far as it will go. So if I open this up a little bit and you can see there is another layer here and we're going to go in as far as that extra layer and push the corner in and then flatten down the paper again. Like this. Now we're going to fold over this section here and we needed to fold away that paper so that we can go farther than this point right here. So if we get this paper out of the way, we can navigate this paper more easily downwards. And we want this to go farther down than this top of the back. So I'm just going to orient it a bit above where this inside reverse fold ends and the farther down you go, the larger the head section will be. 
so you can adjust it. And then I'm going to slant it just slightly so that you can see you have this slight gap. And I like to orient it so that this edge right here ends somewhere between this point and that point so that it's not too far up. And then I'm just going to push this crease into place. And then we're going to fold this back so that we start a crease in this point. And you can see that this point down here is perhaps about halfway between these two sections or a little less actually. That you have this section being a bit smaller than that section. Actually I think one third is a bit better so that you can see that this is not quite a right angle, but it's a bit smaller. And of course this is shaping and you can play around with it, but this is for orientation. Now let's make this symmetrical by opening this up. And then here we have a valley fold and a mountain fold. And we want it to be a valley fold and a mountain fold on the other side too so that when we push it together you can see it falls down like this. And you're also strengthening the crease on this layer like that. So this is what we have now. Now we want to shape the head further. We're going to fold this in so that you can see you have a gap right here and it's perhaps half this distance right there if you want an orientation point. And I like to do this so that this is about central, so that the section in the top and the bottom is the same, just in case you're wondering about the angle. And then I'm going to fold it out again, like this, and you can see that I'm basically following this line right here. And then we need to also add some creases right here. And I'm going to add one right where this colored section of the nose ends. And then fold back so that I think that this distance looks about right. And usually it turns out to be exactly half of this length of the nose. It's what I usually go for. And then press that into place. And now we open all of those up and then fold them in and out. Maybe press it flat and here you can see it's nice and central. And then again in and out. And then that tip of the nose we're going to fold over one more time to give a really nice finish of the nose right there. So that's the basic head shaped. Now we want to fold in this edge right there in an inside reverse fold, bringing this edge over to that edge like a petal fold if you know that and you extend it all the way so that when you close this up you can see this corner lies on that edge right there and of course repeat on the other side now to give it this characteristic look we're going to add a crease starting this point folding out or maybe just curling out the paper rather than adding a hard crease. And we can strengthen that later on too. And now there's not much left to do. We want to shape the legs. For this I'm going to fold behind this corner right here. So looking at it from the inside, folding in this corner and adding a strong crease, there's many layers, and same on the other side. And if that unfolds a little, that actually gives a nice effect. So you don't have to force it to stay in place completely because it shapes the leg 
a little if it opens up just slightly. We're also going to add a diagonal crease along this edge right here, perhaps one third of the way, and then up here. You can also curve the crease if you want to give this a softer look. So this is curving the crease a little bit, and here the same, just by starting the crease here and then going up there and then just pushing it to give it a bit of a softer look, like that. And of course you can make it a completely straight crease too if you want to. We're going to shape this section in a similar way. Again, adding a bit of a diagonal crease and then going up about this far with an extension of that crease line. And again, you can curve it if you want to. And repeat on this side. First pinching in place and then extending upwards to shape the leg. Now we're going to open up the section fold in the tail and then pinch it together here and just push in the paper as far as you like so that this forms a nice angle for you. I'm going to go with about a right angle and then push strongly to add creases throughout. Finally I'm going to add some mountain folds right along here and really extending inwards here to give the dog a nice 3D shape. So just put your hand in here so that you have something to fold against and then start adding that mountain fold that you extend in here. I find that is what makes a huge difference. And then repeat on the other side Again, adding a mountain fold to give a more 3D shape. You can even open the model a little to get in there and then refold it. And then ensure that the tail is still nicely in place. Like that. I like to fiddle around with it until I'm happy. So do that too. And then I also like to go in here, right there, and push this paper open a little bit to shape it and stroke this mountain fold right here to soften it a little bit. And then Check uh, the tail for a nice posture and perhaps reinforce the shaping of the legs and then, believe it or not, your Old English Sheepdog designed by Stephen Casey is all done. It stands really stably and I think is absolutely cute. Now, if you liked this video, do let me know by giving it a thumbs up, commenting below and sharing it with others. And if you like Steven's design aesthetic, how about you fold his Labrador next? Or check out my playlist of tutorials for other origami animals. Finally, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss my next videos. I hope to see you around and, as always, happy folding!